guys, and welcome back to another episode of Fandom Fight in our singles division. I am your host, the King Caleb Coho, but from my attire today, I am the Viking Caleb Coho. Uh, it's been a good day for my team. And I am joined, as always, by my uh, commissioner and friend and partner in crime, Tim Smith. How are you doing? Uh, pretty good. Not as well as your Vikings, but hey, you know, what can, what can you do? I just take it one week at a time, but yeah. Yeah, I'm here helping with this one. This ought to be a good match, I think, Caleb. So I, I think it's going to be a close scoring. Honestly, I don't think it's going to be high scoring, but it's going to be close scoring with these two. Uh, absolutely. Today, returning, we have two returning competitors uh, in the Cupid of Crime, Harley Borch, and the politician, Subrat Sharma, both coming back to the ring after their play-in losses earlier this season. Uh, it's going to be uh, quite the fireworks show, as we know both of these uh, competitors love to talk. And so we're going to let them do that right now in pre-match interviews. All right, so I'm facing against this guy named Holly Boric. Oh, um, I have no idea who she, she, she is. I'm... I'm fairly certain I'm. I know her from somewhere. Oh wait, yeah, she's a member of Kings of the Round Table, which, I mean, it's not exist in multiplex, but yeah, I mean, I know her. I'm well familiar with her. But other than that, I don't know what she, uh, what fandom knowledge she knows, but I'll see what she does. Well, yes, yes, uh, Subraf's correct. I am part of the Knights of the Round Table. Unfortunately, that's not here. And Subrath, tonight, I'm not facing Subrath. Tonight, you are taking the replacement of some person named Tim Smith. Tim Smith, who betrayed me, who turned on me, who just destroyed our friendship. Tim, I am going to destroy you in this match. It's not going to be pleasant. It's not going to be fun for you. It's just going to be an annihilation. I am going to... Oh, I can't wait to get my hands on you for how you betrayed me. We were, You were the first per person I befriended in this community. In some ways, we were best friends. We've been there together. The Can-Am Express, we were going kill it unfortunately yes we were one and one in our two we've had two matches in the leagues in total and we were one and one and you just destroyed that because you a first you teamed up with my arch nemesis rj i can't i felt betrayed but i was going to let that slide but then in a recent match i had in a different league as well you sold your full alliance to rj and I just can't take that. I need to destroy you. I need to destroy, like I said, Subrath, unfortunately, you're not Subrath to me, you're Tim, and I need to take out all my anger. And when I actually finally get good matches against Tim, oh my God, I'm just going to, everything, I'll destroy you in any uh, league, any category, in anything. Whether it be inner geek uh, fandom, nerdgasm, I'll take you on in uh, debating. And fandom debating, I'll destroy you in the movie trivias. Oh, give me a match against you in sports, the sports battlefield. Ooh, TV throwdown. Let's do TV throwdown. Anything, anywhere, give me a match, and I will destroy you. Just like you don't betray me and get away with it. Well, a lot of shots fired by Harley as someone here on the desk in her promo, Subrath, uh, mentioning that he and Harley are uh, somewhat alliance, uh, somewhat aligned in, in these leagues. Uh, but uh, Harley putting a Tim mask on Subrath to, uh, to get her anger out. And uh, I, I think Tim has some, um, some choice words on that whiteboard right there. <laughs> oh, oh, I just put this up just out of habit because, you know, from all these fuckers, they want to run their mouths. Let's see. Har Harley can barely score points in fandom, wants to try to face me. I did beat Subroth for scoring-wise. So, I mean, these two to face me in fandom, I'd probably have a better a better challenge against fucking Nico Suave goalie for Christ's sakes. 
But, wait, wait, wait. I was not informed that Tim was going to be a judge for this match. Okay, Tim, you're lucky, Tim. I trust you. I know you're going to be unbiased. But uh, when it comes to commentary, not so much. But I was not informed. So guess what? You get to see how much I did, what I'll do to you in the future. Yeah, whatever. Wow. All right. Well, I guess we have our uh, our competitors ready to come out, so we'll get into our uh, proper introductions. Introducing Bart. Representing Two Squad. Coming to the ring with a record of zero wins and one defeat. He is the Cupid of Prime, Holly Boy. Oh, let's do this. Let's. And her opponent. Representing the Odd Couple, and entering the ring with a record of zero wins and one defeat, he is the politician, Subrat Sharma! Alright, you both know how this works. Round one is going to work like this. You're going to have a white board up, and it's going to be ten questions from ten predetermined categories, each worth one point apiece. You're going to have three repeats for the entirety of the match and a challenge rule. Um, any questions going into this round? How vicious am I allowed to be? Alright, well, we're just going to jump right into questions and bypass that question entirely and ask some of our uh, pre-approved questions. Question number one is going to be given to you by Tim Smith himself. Um, All right. The first question, first category, DC. What year saw the release of Supergirl? Supergirl, one of the um, one of the uh, more awful DC films to come out. I wouldn't say awful. I'd say plain horrible, but this is... At the time it came out, you kind of understand with movies, graphics, and you can yeah. understand it, but the writing of it yeah. was just horrible. I don't know why witches are in Supergirl, but okay. Five, <laughs> four, three, two. Why? Why are we one. talking about this shitty movie? Pens down. We're going to start with Harley. I went with 1984. That is correct for a point. We'll go over to Sub. I put 86. Oh, just two off there. The Brooklyn Bale curse strikes again. And your second question comes in the category of Pixar movies. Oh, fuck, of course. What was the first Pixar film to win a competitive Oscar? When you say competitive, what exactly do you mean? Competitive, like people compete for the Oscar. Okay, so basically it wasn't the only nomination. Uh, you know, the Oscars, uh, they're under a lot of fire at the moment. Uh, they just took back oh, that popular yeah. film Oscar category. Yeah. They're... Don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of not a good time right now for Oscars. Well, the governor's board better figure it out soon, but for, uh, for all intents and purposes, they got this one right. Five, four, three, two, one. One. Pens down this time. We're going to start with Subrath. It's Fido. That is incorrect. We'll go over to Harley. I win with Monsters, Inc. That is correct for a point. All right. The third question comes from the category of Marvel. What is the only animated Marvel film to be released in theaters so far? You and your animation, Caleb. You know what? When I put when I put it on the wheel in Warzone, wait, I didn't put it on the wheel in Warzone. Nico did it for me, and I still didn't get it. <laughs> still didn't get it. Conspiracies in the Warzone community, but you that's guys story for another day. Right, it was hilarious. I'm just saying, there's a conspiracy that all of us got each other's strengths. That is not fair. At least. I got I got Melissa McCarthy. At least if I got Taika Waititi, I'd have been okay. Uh, that was a fair match. As a judge of that match, you're just complaining Two. too much. One. Pen no, you're complaining Start too with Harley. Go ahead. You can, I I was tricked there for a second, but Big Hero Six. That is correct for a point. We'll go to Sir Breath. 
I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Oh, he. All right. Well, moving on from that one, because Zubrath blatantly uh, had an embarrassing answer. Your fourth question comes in the world of Disney movies. What Disney film is a parody of Sherlock Holmes? Sherlock Holmes, one of the greatest literary characters of all time, and the subject of uh, the best, well, second best BBC show, BBC show of all time. What would you say the first one? Oh, of course, yeah, Doctor Who would be. Do the you first have one to? For you. Do you have to ask Tim? Yeah, like, I I literally had a brain fart there for a second. It was like BBC, yeah. The only, yeah. Sh- the only one of two competitors to use Doctor Who as a strength in fandom TV. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Pen down. We're gonna start with Sibrath on this one. The great monster detective. And he's on the board. We'll go over to Harley. Great mouse detective. Sorry, Marker's uh, dying out there. That's all right. And Harley is perfect going into the fifth question. All right. The fifth question is in the realm of MCU. These are movies inside the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Which MCU film was the first to de-age a character? Bit of a tricky one. Got to think back to the movies. Uh, But... You know they've been they've come a long way in uh, in de aging them, uh, and I oh, see yeah. how they de age Samuel L. Jackson in Captain Marvel. Well, you got to think the de aging technology has come a long way since you know Benjamin Button, and that was god awful. Well, was the movie was great, but the revolutionary for the time. Revolutionary for the time. We'll, well, yeah, yeah, four, for the time, but three, it, you could definitely tell it's two, changed. one pens down. We're gonna start with Subrath on this one. Was it Ant Man? That is correct for a point. We'll go over to Harley. Ant Man. That is correct. Your sixth question comes in the world of Star Wars. What is Anakin's nickname for Ahsoka in Star Wars The Clone Wars? God damn it. Uh, this is a movie that a lot of people forget is a, a part of uh, that Star it's Wars a uh, nickname. Like cluster, we get to ask questions from. Well, uh, well you can only go so far with Star Wars. Give it credit; they both had terrible nicknames for each other. Well, all right then. Five, four, three, two, and one. Bends down. We'll start with Harley on this one. Sky guy. That is incorrect. We'll go over to Subrath. What? We were uh, we were looking for snips. Snips. No. Anakin's nickname for Ahsoka is Snips. Oh, dang it. I Okay, I thought you were asking Ahsoka's nickname for him. And that, with that, there will be no perfect round, first rounds in this game. All right. Your next question first. comes from the worlds of DC because changing your universe name will save your franchise, apparently, according to Warner Brothers. But how many films have been scored by Han or by Hans Zimmer thus far? I'm sorry, the category again? Worlds of DC, DC okay. Cinematic Universe. Okay. Or extended, you, whatever you they want question, to call it. Uh, yeah, that's that'll true. be a first repeat for Super. All right. The question is, how many films have been scored by Hans Zimmer thus far? Hans Zimmer uh, is, uh, you know. One of those uh, composers my, uh, that uh, has done a lot of things that you didn't realize he's done, and uh, you uh, de- definitely don't realize he's done them until afterwards and see it in the credits. And you're like, "Oh, that was a good score." Yeah, he's my second go-to composer after John Williams, <sighs> as he should be. Five, four, three, two, and one. Pens down. We'll start with Harley. I went with three. That is incorrect. We'll go over to Subrath. It's actually two. It is two. Yeah. Super Roth catching up. His third one will be Wonder Woman 1984. All right. Your next question, your eighth one, comes in the world of Bond, James Bond. Who directed Never Say Never Again? Uh, this is probably one of the... Uh, the non-canon one. Well, there's several non-canon ones well, that two. are included in this category. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're all James Bond. Yeah. 
it's three actually, but yes. You know, uh, a lot of uh, a very long-running character, uh, long-running franchise, and uh, yeah. this one, this one's one of the ones that they probably should have uh, made canon. Probably, yeah, yeah. Give it five, four, three, two, and one. Pens down. We're gonna start with Sibrath on this one. Okay. All right, we'll go to Harley. Yeah, not that great with uh, the directors, especially if the non-canon James uh, Bond. We're looking, we're looking for director of Empire Strikes Back himself, Irvin Kershner. Really? Yep, wow. Irvin Kershner. Wow. Yeah, I, All I, right. I think... Your next category and question come in the category of Star Trek. Who composed the score for Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan? The best Star Trek of all time. Second best, in my opinion, but yes, very good. Star oh, what, Trek what's though. yours? I want to hear this. I like to. I think 2009 Star Trek is the best Star Trek in terms of a cinematic <laughs> film. I think it's the best one. But Wrath of Khan, sec, close second favorite. Grew up, that's that's my personal, you know, in the my heart. Of hearts, Star I Trek that. about J.J. Abrams Star Trek is Kirk, Spock, and the cast names. That's it. Still really good movies, well, though. I would disagree with that because I think the current three are very good. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We will start with Harley. I went with James Horner. And you would be correct. And we'll go to Sir Brad. I didn't get it. All right. And your final question of the round comes from the world of scores and soundtracks. What song plays as the villains are brought together in Midway City in Suicide Squad? I think probably the weakest movie thus far out of the okay, worlds of DC. The repeat the question, please. Uh, sure thing, that will be Subrath's second repeat. In scores and soundtracks, what song plays as the villains are brought together in Midway City in Suicide Squad. Uh, this scene in particular, I think, is one of the better ones of the movie, but the movie itself is altogether really, really poorly made. Yeah, yeah. Uh, David Ayer, uh, don't know why we still give him chances, especially after that, uh, that after ruining that Max Landis script for Bright. Uh, but yeah, well. Well, he'll, pro he'll probably make another movie. <laughs> there's a lot of directors that should not be given other chances. You're very, you're very, very correct, Brett Ratner. Looking at you, <laughs> five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll start with Sibrath. I have to apologize for my uh, marker, but I, I, I actually put down the real Slim Shady. You can't see it. Um, that is incorrect. We'll go over to Harley. I went with Come Together. No, we were looking for Seven Nations Army. Oh, Seven Nations yeah. Army. Yeah, By the yeah. White Stripes, White the most Stripes. underrated rock band of all time. And at the yeah. end of round number one, <sighs> Harley is in the lead with six. Subrath trailing with three as we get into round number two, which works like this. This is our... Wheel round. You each get a chance to spin our wheel brought to you by wheeldecide.com. Um, if you land on something you like, you're going to get five questions from that category worth two points apiece. You can defer to multiple choice, but it will bring the point value down to being only worth one. If you don't like what you spin on, you can spin again and land on something else, but you're stuck with it. The only category you can't spin off is opponent's choice. Don't be smart with me. I will turn this ship around. And uh, that is, uh, those are the rules. Any questions? Nope. Nope. All right. So I'm going to bring up our lovely wheel in this nice commercial break as elevator music begins to play. <laughs> nope. I'll probably just edit it up or cable. Anyway, hopefully this is loading. Is it loaded? Yes, it is loaded. All yeah. right. I have the option to let Seabreath go first, yep. right? Okay. Seabreath uh, go first. All right, so Harley's going to have Subrath go first here at the start of round number two. Here are the categories on the wheel. You have DC, James Bond, Middle Earth, Fast and Furious, MCU, Indiana Jones, Kaiju, and Star Wars, and Players and Opponents' Choice, and your spin is away, Subrath. And it lands on James Bond. Would you like to keep it or spin again? Spin again. 
All right, so Breath of Seconds, whatever he lands on this time, and it looks like he's going to be answering from Fast and Furious. All right, Tim, you want to give him his questions in Fast and Furious? All right. Subroth, your first question in Fast and Furious. What is the name of the villain in Fast and Furious 6? Owen Shaw. That is correct for two points. Big two points there for Subrath. All right, your second question. What is the name of the hacker character played by uh, Natalie Emmanuel? Natalie, Natalie Emmanuel. Natalie Emmanuel. Do I have the multiple choice option? Yes, you have multiple choice. Right, multiple okay. choice is A. Natalie, B, Mia, C, Ramsey, or D, Hope? Ramsey. That is correct for one point. I am smart. You got the correct one. All right, your third question. What film marked the first appearance of Tej? Too Fast, Too Furious. Another two points. See, we're all starting to run away with this. All right, your penultimate question. What rapper plays Edwin in The Fast and the Furious? Edwin, a forgotten character of the first one. Well, multiple choice. All right, your options are A, Ludicrous, B, Sticky Fingers, C, Ja Rule, or D, Nas? We're going to kick you down. Five, four, Ja Rules. That is correct for one point. <clears throat> All right, and your last question. What film marked the first appearance of Giselle? Fast and Furious 4. That is correct. Clean and sweep yeah. in that category. Clean sweep for Subrath in the Fast and the Furious. Good job, and, good job. Uh, and now Harley is going to get a chance to spin the wheel here in round number two. Can I get a score recap too? Uh, the score recap, Subrath is up to 11, and Harley, you have six, and your spin is away, and it lands on... Opponent's choice. Sibrath, what is Harley answering questions from in round two? Uh, what categories do you have there? Uh, we have DC, James Bond, Middle Earth, MCU, Indiana Jones, Kaiju, and Star Wars on the wheel still. I'm going to make you suffer, Harley. I picked Kaiju. Okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. boy. And Harley, you are going to be answering questions from the world of Kaiju. Okay. And your, your first question is, what is the name of the character played by John Boyega in Pacific Rim Uprising? Looking for first and last name. Yeah, I'm going to need multiple choice on the when I hear it. All right, your options are A, Nate Lambert, B, Jake Pentecost, C, Newton Geisler, or D, Herman Gottlieb. Is it um, Bravo? It would be B for a point. Your second question. What is the name of the rescue vessel sent to the boat sinking at the start of 1954's Godzilla? Yeah, I'm definitely going to need multiple choice for that. All right, your options are A, Aiko Maru, B, Sarazawa, C, Amiko, or D, Bingo Maru. I'm going to go with Alpha. That is incorrect. Sir Brath, a chance for a one-point seal. Sherazawa. That is also incorrect. Looking for Bingo Maru. Bingo Maru. Your third question. What profession does Jake Driscoll have in 2005's King Kong? Oh, okay, multiple choice. All right, your multiple choice options are A, a playwright, B, actor, 
C, cameraman, or D, talent agent? I'm going to go with cameraman. That is incorrect. Super at the chance for a one point steal. What are the options again? Uh, your options are A, playwright, B, actor, C, cameraman, or D, talent agent. I'm deciding between playwright and talent agent. Mm. Playwright. That is correct for one point. <clears throat> All right. Your fourth and penultimate question, Harley, in second round is what Oscar nominated actress? Plays Vivian Graham in 2014's Godzilla. That wouldn't be Elizabeth Olsen, would it? Is that your final answer? Yes, it is. That is incorrect. Sir, so brought the chance for a two point steal. He didn't pick the model for choice, but I, I know the face, but I forgot the name. Uh, uh, just, uh, I mean, Five. Four, three, two, one. Do you have an answer? Oh, oh incorrect. Looking for Sally Hawkins. Yep. Sally Hawkins. That's what I'm looking for. All right. Your final question, Harley, is what city does Rob have to move to as a result of his new job in Cloverfield? Japan. Oh, uh, uh, Tokyo. That is correct for two points. I just watched Clover Field yesterday. Yes. Well, it certainly paid off for you as now you are up to nine points. Superath still in the lead with 11, but we have no, a game going to number three. 12. 12. Wait, oh, no. right. Yeah, no, he oh, got yeah, the one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the one right, point. Yeah. That's my yeah, bad. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm going to yeah. edit that out. So at the end of round number two, Harley has nine points, trailing behind Subrath's 12 points going into round number three, and we have a game. Round three is going to work like this. Each uh, competitor is going to hear the category issued to the field. They will then bet how many points they would like to wager between zero and two points. If you get the question right, you get the points. If you get them wrong, you lose those points, and we go until the game is over or someone is mathematically eliminated or the score reaches zero, which is the Jim and Nico rule. Any questions, folks? No, I'm good. All right, then I will give you your first category, which is Indiana Jones. How many points would you like to bet on Indiana Jones? I'll figure it up for a minute here. Uh, I know there's not a lot of people who like Indiana Jones, but the people who like Indiana Jones love it. <laughs> Yeah, I only know of one competitor that loves Indiana Jones off the top of my head. Wouldn't his nickname be the Auto Adam? No, oh. that would be someone else. Oh, I believe Jeremy. he's looking for the vicious troll up herself. But oh. yes, Jeremy also we'll loves go five, Indiana Jones. Four, three, two, one. We will start with Sibrath. How many points are you betting? One point. All right, and Harley, how many points are you betting? One point as well. All right, your question is you both put one point on the table from Indiana Jones. Who played Elsa in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade? Um, Last Crusade, heralded by many as being the best of the franchise. I think it is the second best of the franchise. Yeah, I kind of like uh, the first one more, but... You know, I think, I think Raiders is the best one. I mean, after all, it, uh, it was Oscar nominated for a reason. Uh, but let me give them five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We're going to start with Harley. I went with Kate Blanchett. I know. That is incorrect yep. and a loss of one point. Sibrath. I didn't get it. All right. Both competitors lose a point. The answer was Allison Duty. And now the score is 11 to 8 going into the second question. You want to give them their category, Tim? All right. Your question, which you can bet your points on, comes in the category of Marvel. Marvel. How many points are you going to bet on Marvel? Marvel is a difficult category uh, because there are a lot of uh, turds amongst <laughs> the diamonds. And you have no idea which one to pick. As a lot of turns to quote, of to quote, diamonds. 
to quote a certain Marvel movie coming out soon. There are a lot of turds in the wind in this category. Five, four, three. That part is you're not two, wrong at all. One. Hands down. Harley, how many points are you betting in this? I went with two. Zabrath. Two. All right. Both are going for two. Tam, what is their question? All right. Your question in Marvel. Name all five Spider-Man rogue gallery villains to appear in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. This, uh, this is a bit of a tricky one, but if you think about it, the, you know. I, uh, I'm one of the strong defenders of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. don't think it's as bad as people say it is, but uh, I, watched yeah, Spider-Man, I watched Spider-Man 3 the other day. And that one is as bad as everyone says it is. I was watching that last night on Could Netflix you, at work. Uh, so, Tim, yeah. uh, uh, Tim uh, could you repeat the question, please? That is Sabrath's last repeat. All right. The question is, name all five Spider-Man rogue gallery villains to appear in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Um, I get, uh, for clarification, I guess, are we just talking about their outfits? Rogue gallery villains is what we've got for you. Oh, That's all okay. we can so, give you. Yeah, yeah, no, I That's all we can give you. I We're going to start counting you, count you down. I'm going to use a repeat. All right. That is Harley's first repeat, Tim. All right. Name all five Spider-Man rogue gallery villains to appear in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Which I'm, I'm with you, Caleb. I liked the Amazing Spider-Man movies one and two. I did. I, I kind of wish they would have gave it a third, but oh, I wanted know. to see three and four, like they had announced, because three was supposed to be really cool, and then four was supposed to kill off Peter Parker and introduce Miles Morales. And I would have loved to have watched both those movies because I liked Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. He's way better than Tobey Maguire, who is garbage in the role, and Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy is much more believable, better chemistry with that Spider-Man than Kristen Dunst had with Tobey Maguire. <sighs> well, and I, I I will say, Toby, Toby was a better Peter Parker. I will oh, say no, that. No, he wasn't. He was a bad actor all the way around. It was a terrible character all the way around. I can't root for Toby Maguire's Spider-Man in any way, shape, or form because I hate the character because he's played by a douche. But, four. Can I give him a repeat? That is Harley's second repeat, Tim, and we're torturing you by reading this eight times. Yeah, yeah. Name all five Spider-Man Rogue Gallery villains to appear in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Huh. All right. Well, we're going to give this one last try. Um, Price Styles Howard, Gwen Stacy, uh, or Emma Stone, Gwen Stacy? The answer is Emma Stone, Gwen Stacy. And if you say otherwise, you do not deserve to be in this community. And I don't want to see your face ever again. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's all jest. It's all joke. Fuck so, Doctor Who. Five. Four, I will eject you from this call. Three, <laughs> two, and one. Pens down. We'll start with Subra. I put a uh, green... Uh, you, can, you can see it. My marker is fucked up. Uh, I put Green Goblin, Vulture, Mysterio, Scorpio, and Dark Op. That is incorrect. We'll go over to Harley. I went with Rhino, Green Goblin, Vulture, Doc Ock, and Sandman. That is also incorrect. We were looking for Rhino, Electro, Black Cat, Green Goblin the first, Norman Osborn, and Green Goblin the second, Harry Osborn. Oh my yep. god, how did how did I forget Electro? And uh, both of them are gonna lose two points on that yeah. one. Which makes it nine to six. There's still the potential for a 12-point swing going into our final three questions. There are three questions left. And your third category is the MCU. How many points would you guys like to bet on the MCU? So that was a tricky one. That was a little bit of a brain yeah, a buster. Bit thinker, yeah. A little bit of a thinker. Yeah. Uh, but a uh, thinker is DC, so we're going to move on. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Super. How many points are you betting on the MCU? Two points. All right. And Harley? One. All right. We have the potential to see some lead shift here on this one. And your question from the MCU. What year does the prologue of Iron Man 3 take place? 
very good prologue scene, I thought, for Shane Black's Iron Man. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I'm at three. Yes, sir. Since my since my marker is not working, can I just say it? Because I, I really don't. I, 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 yeah, that's fine. We'll go to you first. We'll just go to you first for the rest of the match. All right. We'll count them down. Five, four, three, three, two, one. Pens down. Super F. What do you got? It was in Switzerland, New Year's Eve, 1999. That is indeed correct for a point. Uh, we'll Harley. No, two, uh, points uh, two points, and then Harley got a point. Damn it. And there it is, breath with back up to 11. Harley mounting a comeback at seven with two questions left and an eight point swing still on the table. What is their category, Tim? All right, your category is the category of DC. How many points will you bet for DC? Movies outside the worlds of DC. Well, the worlds of DC uh, not as beloved as uh, regular DC. Uh, <laughs> um, well, when TV gets it better than your movies, you have a fucking problem. Would I say Arrow is better than uh, than Batman v Superman? No, I would not. I would not at all. Um, we'll go. What, what about the rest of them? Huh? Well, the Flash is better than everything except Wonder Woman, uh, and that. Well, no, one Flash is better than Batman v Superman. Five. Four. Legends of Tomorrow, also better. Uh, nope, not better than uh, Batman v Superman or Man of Steel. One. I will eject you from this call. Bet, bet. Pens down. We're going to start with Harley. That went with nothing. All right, and Subrath. Two points. All right. Subrath ensuring if he gets this right, this one is game, set, and match. And Timmy, want to give him their question in DC? All right. What villain does Batman first encounter? In the dark night. Harley, we would like you to answer for oh. stats purposes, uh, just for the sake of uh, stock footage when he tallies up our stats and for accuracy and all that good stuff. So we'll give you a little bit of time. Dark Knight, uh, heralded as the best superhero movie of all time, and I would agree. Best superhero movie of all time. I'd say it's up there, but I don't know about the best. And certainly better than Logan, and all of you can at me. Five, four, three. Wow. Two, Making no friends five, today, Caleb Coho. One pen's down. We're going to start with Subrath. Skako. That is correct for two points. And Harley, did you get it for stats? No, I, I went with Catwoman, Selena Kyle. And your winner. By way of technical knockout, the politician, Subrath Sharma. <laughs> Scarecrow was correct. Catwoman not appearing until the Dark Knight Rises um, was a, uh, a solid match here. Uh, everyone uh, bringing their best. Subrath uh, looked like he was uh, like uh, maybe, maybe going to lose at the end of round one and made a comeback there in round two and held on to that lead and played the game smart in round three. And now we will uh, – we see someone uh, coming out with a win for their record, and it's uh, uh, it was a good match. What do you think, Tim? Oh, yeah, very good. Subroth came back right there at the end. He didn't have that strong of a round one, but round two and round three really worked out for him, and came back with the win, kind of like the opposite you saw with Harley with a strong round one, six out of ten. Round two was not kind. Neither did That's it seem okay. like round Three, but overall, good game. The right person won with Subroth. So, yeah, it was a good match overall. Glad to see Subroth win. Well, uh, since you're the one with absolutely no bias at all, you want to go do post match interviews? Sure, sure. Subroth, let's start off with you since you are our winner. How are you feeling after that win, getting 13 points, beating your teammates in? Kings of the Round Table over in other places, but how do you feel with this win in fandom to finally get your first win? Well, certainly I'm feeling better than the Dallas Cowboys I'm feeling right now. Uh, I cannot wait for Indonesia to finally sink under the sea. Wow. I, 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 but uh, really, honestly, I mean, 
I mean, uh, how you, you shouldn't have used me as Tim. You should have used someone else as Tim, or maybe use Tim as Tim. But I mean, I yeah, just leave that for another place. I mean, how you you're great. Uh, you put put pressure on me on the first round. But yeah, I mean, second round, third round, we yeah it switch positions. So yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry that they beat you, man. <laughs> after after this win, Super Bowl, do you have anyone you're gunning for for your next match? Now that you got that first win, that monkey off your back. Definitely that one person which I'm looking forward to since the first play and I played, which was not a fair game for me because I was in a league for a long time. This person. Um, that is your next. Oh, ah, well, Zadius is a strong competitor. It will be a big challenge for you, Sue Broth. But we'll have to see what the future holds to see if that match will come or not. But congratulations again on your win. 13 points is a good score for you in fandom. And we go to our unfortunate loser, Harley. Harley. After that win, or after that loss, I should say, you said it was going to be a win, but we saw what happened. How are you feeling after that loss? Uh, feeling dejected. Uh, like you ended up not being uh, so on um, uh, being biased. You were pretty unbiased during this match, but still, I wasn't aware that you were going to be the judge. And see, so yeah, that threw me off my game a little bit. I like the Kaisu films. It's, there's a lot of them, and it's uh, hard to remember a lot of the specific information when it comes to them. Unfortunately, that did kind of sink, sink myself there. I, I thought I was being fair by letting Sue Breath go first, and it worked, unfortunately it worked out for his favor. So, But it's just like, and uh, yeah, no, good match, though, good match. Caleb, what happens to be Tim's record? I'm just wondering. Well, I'll, uh, I'll let you know that Tim is 0-1. Uh, he does have a match this season against one uh, uh, potions master named Ed Sale. Uh, and so if uh, I'll, I'll let you know now. If, okay. uh, if, Tim, if Tim comes out the loser of that, I, I'll, I'll feed That's him. That's almost you. guaranteed. Uh, That's so, almost guaranteed. So, kind of uh, like it was guaranteed that Subroth was going to beat you because you are a horrible fandom player with probably Nico having a better accuracy than you. Oh, and okay. I, I really, Nico? I really, I really now want to just disqualify and give Ed the win so I can humiliate you even more in fandom, oh. just like your team got humiliated. You keep, but, bring, you keep bringing up Nico. That's uh, Nico. All you have to do is ask him a Star Wars question, and he's guaranteed to get it wrong. But it's just like, but you know, honestly, come on. Like, like when you're asked a, fan, or a, a kaiju question, you get it wrong. Yes. Oh, no. I, I think I did. Uh, I got two of them correct. So two out of five. So I'm happy. Barely. With but okay. yeah, if if that is the outcome, which I, I kind of wouldn't mind just throwing that match just, just to annihilate you. But I want to beat Ed to go on to get an even record. Which is something you have not achieved yet, yeah, but with I'm that. sure there's a future of you in fandom. I'm sure Caleb has ideas, regardless of what the outcomes of matches are. But yeah, it, round two or round one was a strong one, six out of ten. Round two, not so much. And round three, I, I, I do have to ask why? Why did you bet zero for that last category? Well, just because like I figured uh, Super F would probably bet something, so uh, there will be a chance to um, uh, catch up there. And and just like if I happen to have gotten it wrong, um, I would have just I would put it out of the reach no matter what. There, so I was kind of banking on Super F to um, bet at least one or two points. That way, there. Well, I was really hoping that he do two points. He did do two points, but unfortunately, he got the question correct. And, well, it, and and it's also it also comes down to me. I need to hear the. I need to for myself. I need to hear the questions better. Is that Star Wars question round one? I just needed to fully hear it again uh, to hear that I got the names mixed up. 
Ahsoka calls him Sky Guy. Anakin calls her Snips. Oh. That was just um, well, a yeah. on my point. Sometimes that does happen, but unfortunately, you lost this one. We'll see what happens in the future, uh, especially with teams to see if you and Matt come back in the team tournament in the uh, loser's bracket. But with that, I mean, seven points still get you some more points added for your points in your career. But I'm sure we'll see you back again. Unfortunately, you had to lose against your faction leader, Subroth, in this one. But let's throw it back to our hosts, Caleb and Tim, now. All right. Well, uh, that was the close one. Uh, words being exchanged. It looks like Tim and Harley might actually be a match that we get to see, uh, which will be uh, interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm actually just going to write it down on the schedule that uh, – Harley plays the loser of Tim and Ed, uh, which uh, will be a it'll be a fun match to look out for. Um, and Subrath wanting Zadius, we'll see. We'll have to see if that's on the cards or uh, if that's even a possibility with the uh, scores and records. Uh, but we will uh, we'll have to we'll have to take some uh, configuring and some looking around. But uh, Subrath advances to a one and one record, which now puts him uh, closer to that top ten ranking. Uh, where Harley with an zero two drops down to the bottom five, um, but. That's nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, both put up a good match, um, and we uh, will see both of these competitors back. Uh, so it's we'll see how it goes. Uh, but with that, uh, this has been Fandom Fight Singles, so I'm going to take it over into plugs, starting with our winner, Sirbrath. Where can they find you? Well, you guys can find me at Movie Battleground. I mean, I basically run the graphics part over there, and we have our first match after a long break on September 12th, this, this uh, Wednesday. And yeah, just keep a look out for it. All right, Harley, where can they find you? Well, a lot of people already know that you can find me all over the place at Full Metal, Multiplex, and Worldwide. But it's just also, I'd, I'd just like to take a quick second to promote something that I'm doing um, in my personal life. Um, I, I'm helping out a group called Why We March LGBT. It's just basically we're trying. A lot of times we're trying to um, preserve his the history of the LGBTQ uh, community, and also try to help educate, put it on events. Like our big uh, project for this year, uh, next year's Pride is uh, the Stonewall ex uh, exhibit, and everything like that. So if you if you'd like to look us up, just look us up on uh, Why We March uh, dot LGBT. And be and just at least t take a look at the website if you're, you're anywhere near interested in like any of the history or uh, a little educating yourself and all that. And also, as you can tell, I like having fun. Don't be afraid to be who you are. That's the I just want to leave everyone with that. All right, Tim, where can I find you? Uh, you can find me here as always with Multiplex. Uh, many of the divisions, helping just out in movies, helping Jim out in TV and with TV fandom, as you saw the first play in match. Uh, uh, next week will come the second play in or the next play in match. We'll get those done. We also have Jim and Sadius on the cards to get us closer to the championship for regular TV because Chance Ellison had to ascend to the Schmodown which a lot of our championships had to change. <laughs> well, with but, that being said there, the title should be vacated and handed down to the person who he lost to, right? No. Oh, come on. Shut up. And the winner of Zaddy's and Jim will face Harley, and I'm sure the winner of that will be uh, defending TV champion. We'll find out. And, of course, with sports, now that that's on uh, – we have a lot of great matches coming. Uh, should be on our third match by the time this airs. So we'll have that set up. And it'll be a great continuing of season one to get us into season two. Of course, you can help me or you can find me here helping Caleb in fandom because God forbid the real fandom head Kane ever shows the fuck up anymore. But I'm always here to help my little buddy. Caleb, unless he becomes the king, and then we have words. And of course, uh, other great TV shows we have planned out. Me and Caleb here host uh, Fantasy Football Update, where we go over to fantasy plays, the games, 
the games in the league, sort of fantasy, all that great stuff. Uh, T Public, you can support your players by buying their favorite shirts. And I think that's it. If I missed anything, I'm sure Mr. Coho will hammer it out. And as always, guys, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Caleb Coho. That is K A L E B K O H O. You can also find me on YouTube, Caleb Coho, where I do music, Coho Productions, where I do movie related content. And on both channels, you can find my movie, Chick Part Do It, out now, where you can watch for free. What you can't really get for free is my album, Shit for Teens, which you can get with my forks. Uh, no. Which I. D- <laughs> uh, on iTunes and Spotify, you can get my album, Shoot for Teams, with my group, The Forks, uh, available now. And you can find me right here on Multiplex Entertainment, hosting Fandom Fight every Friday, Nerdgasm every Saturday, and Multiplex Fantasy Football every Wednesday with Tim Smith. And uh, Let's Make a Movie will be back at the end of September to show off our short film. But with that, that has been Harley. That has been Subrat. That has been Tim. I have been Caleb, and this has been Fandom Fight. We will see you all next week with some more awesome magic.